hi welcome again to um our devotionals for this week um we're going to be discussing a few things throughout the week that i hope would help someone would help everyone um, if there's anything we can learn um, in these days if there's anything we can learn it is that we should all have an attitude of learning we should all have an attitude to learn we should all have the attitude to improve on ourselves we should all have the attitude to move ahead with our lives as we grow older we should grow wiser we should always have a hunger to learn to get better even if what I'm going to say today doesn't apply to you, I'm sure it's going to apply to someone you know, it's going to apply to someone in your family. And with these tips, you can help them. Um, and you can make everyone better. All right, so what we're going to address first is purpose. This is because I think until you discover who you are, you wouldn't know where you're going. Marriage is a journey in life. It is part of your journey in life. Um, from when you were born to when you get to whatever age you are, 24, 25, 26, 28, 30, 35, whatever it is. Now marriage is the next stage in your life. Your life is your time. So purpose, your purpose is central to your relationships and essential to your marriage. It's essential to the choice, to your the, the choice of your life partner or how you choose a life partner. So who you marry is very important and it's tied to your purpose. If you know who you are, then you would know who you are looking for. So if you know who you are, if you know, oh, I'm going to Lagos and I want someone who will go to Lagos with me, then you'll be looking for someone who wants to go to Lagos. You won't be looking for someone who wants to go to Portacot. If you look for someone who wants to go to Portacot and take the person who wants to go to Portacot on that journey, at some point, a person is going to say no. I want to go to Portacot, I don't want to go to Lagos. If you force that person to go to Lagos with you and start to live in Lagos with that person, that person will be uncomfortable, that person will complain, will grumble, will be unfulfilled in his own, in, in her, his or her own purpose and would make you unhappy. So if you know where you are going, if you know who you are, then you know where you're going. And then if you know where you're going, then it's easier to choose who you want to take with you. And it's better to have a willing companion, isn't it? It's better to have a willing companion. So we're going to talk about purpose. I'm sure you know, if you are Christian, even people who are not Christians believe that everyone on earth has a purpose. God doesn't operate in a vacuum. God is not confused. God is not, doesn't, is not, it, you know, some people say he's a chess player. God doesn't just move things and say, okay, you go here, you go there, um, you come here, you go to America, you go to Nigeria, you go to England, you go to Brazil, you go to, you know, he just throws babies down anyhow. God doesn't do that. God has a purpose for every, and I mean every human being that is born on planet Earth. When you understand, as people always say, it's almost a cliche, that in every ejaculation there are, what, six million sperm, whatever. Or well, how many million? About six million. How come it is that that specific, that singular sperm fertilized that particular ovum that decided to come out on that month and be ripe at that particular time, on that particular day. And you grew and you withstood all the challenges of pregnancy and you came forth and you withstood all the challenges 
of being brought forth into the world. If you've ever been in a labor room, you would know that it's not an easy process to come out. And you come out and you live one year, two years, three years, four years. There is a reason God sent you here. And it is your duty to find out why. That's why we say discovering your purpose. Discovering, because it is already there. It's already there. And God has given us so many clues along the way to help us know, this is why I have put you here. And this is why I have sent you to this place at this particular time. God sends us to a particular family. God sends us to a particular community. God sends us to a particular individual. God sends us. This is how God works. Whenever you in the Bible, you, you read about purposes to fulfill God's purpose, his predestined purpose. Why? Because God had already in mind what he wanted to do. And then he sends you, he sends you to fulfill it. So that is that is it about purpose. It's very important. It goes without saying. Now, it is important as a single man and as a single lady that you find out who you are before you get married. Because if you don't find out who you are before you get married, you could make a mistake. You could make a mistake. And as I said, you could have an unwilling companion. If the two of you probably didn't know what it was um, God had sent you to do and you got married and you find out what it is and the two of you still agree, then it's fine, it could work. But where the issue comes, where the issue arises is when you don't agree. For instance, let's say man's been called into ministry, God wants him to be a preacher or pastor and he marries a lady. Um, now, both of them get married. They say they're unbelievers. Didn't know anything about purpose. Didn't know anything about being a pastor. Didn't know anything about a call. And then both of them get married. And then along the line, they become born again. And he finds out, oh, I believe God is calling me to ministry. And this lady is like, no, don't marry a pastor. No, I don't think it's, it's, it's right for me. It's not my thing. I don't think I'm prepared for it. I don't think I'm called into it. It's go there's going to be a lot of friction. There's going to be a lot of problems. There's going the marriage could potentially break. Even if it doesn't, it's going to be a rocky path. Even if she finally agrees, she might be an unwilling companion. And that is also a difficult path. So it's important to find out what it is God has called you to be, what it is God has called you to do before you get married. And then when you begin a relationship, you found, you found out what God wants you to do. And then you now begin a relationship. It is important for you to cast the vision. Very important for you to cast the vision. This is now what would separate the good seed from the weed. Because when you cast a vision, you find out who exactly is with you on that vision path. The person who wants to do it. And it's not just by saying it, it's in the way the person acts, it's in the, the person's own visions, the person's own dreams. You can ask the person first before you even say, so what, what are your dreams? What would you like to do for God? Where do you see yourself in the next 10 years? Where do you see yourself in the next 15 years? And then you see if you agree. You see if two of you are heading in the right direction. Now this person says, oh, I see myself um, working as a missionary in Sudan and in um, the Middle East and in the Gulf States. I want to be a missionary to the place. And God has called you to be, um, to maybe be in ministry in Nigeria. You see that things are not going to work smoothly if you go on with this person. So you would now go back to God or you'd now dis you, you now need to think about it and reflect on it and decide, is this right for me or not? At least you're able to do that. So it's very, very important that we know 
who we are. We discover who we are before we get married. You discover who you are. That's the first thing. Second thing, when you meet someone, when you begin to mingle, when you begin to date in quotes, you have friends, you, you, you sit out, you talk. Rather than talk about rubbish, rather than talk about big brother, rather than talk about things that don't make any sense. You talk about your vision, you talk about your dream, you talk about your aspirations, you talk about what God has put in your heart to do. And then you see whose vision, where, where is it leading up to? Whose vision is matching mine? Where is it going? Are we going in the same direction or are we not? I'm going to talk a bit about how do we discover our purpose? How do we discover our purpose? Because I think this is also very important. I'm going to read a few passages. Colossians chapter 1 from verse 9. Paul prayed a prayer. It says, For this reason, we also, since we since the day we had it, do not cease to pray for you and to ask that you may be filled with the knowledge of of his will in all wisdom and spiritual understanding that you may walk worthy of the Lord fully pleasing him being fruitful in every good work and increasing in the knowledge of God strengthened with the all might according to his glorious power for all patience and long suffering with joy but i want us to concentrate on the first verse which is verse 9 it says for this reason we also see since the day we have it do not cease to pray for you and to ask that you may be filled with the knowledge of his will in all wisdom and spiritual understanding so this Pauline prayer is a very, very important. It's another one in Ephesians chapter 1, from the 17 to 20. It's another one in Ephesians chapter 3. It's very important you pray these prayers when you want to know what has God called me to do. It is prayer. Prayer, prayer. That is the best place to start. Begin to pray this prayer for yourself every day. Father, I want to know what you have called me to do. I want to know your will for my life. I want to know the direction you are sending me. I want to know what you want me to do. Very important. Very important. Prayer is the best place to start. The leading of the Holy Spirit is another that cannot be over or underemphasized. The leading of the Holy Spirit. It is his spirit that is within us that tells us that moves us, that leads us. It will lead you in the way that you should go. The Holy Spirit will tell you, the Holy Spirit will minister to you. God also leads us, this is leading of the Holy Spirit, God leads us through his prophet, through your pastor, through your mentor. God leads you, God leads you through, through um, visions and through dreams. God leads us to our talents, the things we can do easily, to our passion, the things that we really were really passionate about, the things we want to see change, the things that grieve us, the things we want to work hard at, the things we want to make a difference in. These are the things that help reveal what God has called you to do. Because whatever it is that God has called you to do, one is it's big it's bigger than what you can think of it's bigger than your mind can contain it is a big god doesn't do small things god gives only big dreams so it's a big thing it's something you won't be able to do alone it's something you will need someone to do with you you need a group of people to do with you so when god gives us a vision it's something that is big when god gives us a vision it's something that we are passionate about it's something that we care about is something that we are willing to do. God, it's not likely that your purpose is hidden in something you're, you're not talented about, something you're not particular about. It's not likely. God always gives you a purpose in line with your strengths, in line with your passion, in line with. I mean, the reason you have those passions and those strengths is because of the purpose. So the purpose is the foundation. And these things are the skills, 
are the, the, the equipment God has given you to help you to fulfill your purpose. You will continue to run around in circles until you find what God wants you to do. You have an option. You can decide not to find it. That's the truth. Some people just say, and decide not to find it. You would waste your time because you spend your time doing the wrong thing. You spend your time in going in the wrong direction. You won't be fulfilled. You won't live your life to the fullest. You won't utilize the things God has given you. You won't utilize the gifts God has given you. You won't utilize the skills God has given you or the talents he's put into you. You won't utilize it. You will live a suboptimal life. A life that is not good enough. A mediocre life. A life that is just not there. That just doesn't make the cut. For you, no one wants to live that life. I believe every Christian, every born again Christian, wants to find and wants to please God. Wants to find out what God's will for my life. Everyone wants to find it. Everyone wants to find it. What is your job to discover it? God's not going to do the discovery for you. You have to do it yourself. You have to do it yourself. So as I said, prayer, as far as I'm concerned, prayer is the main thing. Pray fervently. Pray because it's building up yourself in your most holy faith. Pray in the Holy Ghost. Pray fervently. Pray fervently. The more you pray, the more sensitive you become. The more you pray, the more you open up deep things of God, the more your spirit is alive to God, the more you will hear, the more this God spirit can lead you, the more you pray. It is the basis of finding your purpose. But there are other things which I have listed, which would also help you to find your purpose. It is the first thing to do, as far as I'm concerned, in finding a life partner. It is the first thing. Coupled with praying for a purpose, you can also pray, Father, show me who you want me. Give me a life partner who would be passionate about the same things I'm passionate about. Give me a life partner whose purpose clicks with mine so it would be easier for me. You know, God talking about Eve, before Eve was made, when God was saying, it is not good for man to be alone, he says, I will make a help meet for him. So there is a help meet for you. And for the woman, you are a help meet for a man of purpose. You say, Lord, open my eyes to the man I'm supposed to. It would be great, it always is great, if you're able to help someone achieve his purpose. And as you do that, you're achieving yours. It's, for me, that's the recipe for success. That is the recipe for fulfillment. That is, if there is someone or some people gotten married, and I've just found out, well, this is really what I want to do, and it doesn't gel with what your spouse, especially for the woman, it doesn't gel with what your husband is doing. It doesn't gel with his vision. I would appeal to you to go with the man's vision. I will appeal to you to submit to the man's vision. It mightn't be very easy. I'm not saying this lightly. It mightn't be very easy. It mightn't be a walk in the park. But ultimately, you will see that it would be life and peace. You will see that you would be fulfilled doing it. There's something, there's some fulfillment that comes with serving. There's a fulfillment that comes with giving yourself. There's a fulfillment that comes with helping someone. And when you do it, God will bless you and give you avenues and opportunities to also fulfill your own vision. God will give you 
the opportunity. And if that man is a sensitive, good man, he would also give you some leeway to do what you need to do. It would work for everyone. So I'm hoping a few people, and I'm hoping that we will move ahead in your quest of problems. Please remember to subscribe to his YouTube channel at Saint Vlog. Follow him on Facebook at Chukudum. Follow him on Twitter at Chukudum Oh.